After you subscribe, do not forget to hit that notification button so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. Enjoy! Oh, what up, TYG Nation? This is your boy Victory with Thank You Gaming, and we are live, and we're about to talk about MTG 2021, Core Set 2021. So if you aren't aware, this set comes out July 3rd, and if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and pre-order your booster box, your bundle box, everything that is 2021 related. I'm super excited for it, and this video we're going to talk about the new Planeswalkers that are going to be released with 2021. So pretty much uh, MTG Arena is pretty awesome if you haven't done it, you know, with, what go with what's going on. You can download it, play it on your computer. It's pretty awesome. Um, they released this set, this sets before the actual release date, so you have an idea about the cards, what you're looking for. Maybe you can start thinking about some theme decks that you got in mind and things like that. So, here's the thing. This video, I'm going to tell you right now, is going to be a very long video because we are going to talk about every single Planeswalker and pretty much go over the, the loyalty abilities and their ultimate. Now, here's the cool thing about it. If you go to the description below, if you're looking for... <clears throat> one specific planeswalker that you want to see by all means go in the description below we got some timestamps with the names of the of the planeswalkers just click on it and go to the one that you want to see so i'm really excited for this video um there's the, some of these planeswalkers are already broken and it's they're pretty pretty insane some of them you can only get on uh, with the packs and some of them are going to be part of the uh, planeswalker decks that uh, wizard of the codes are going to come uh, are going to come out with the course of 2021 um of 2021 is going to bring of course uh, the booster box booster packs boost uh the bundle is going to come out with some pre-releases and it's going to come out with planeswalker decks and it's going to come out with um beginner decks as well so just stay in the lookout uh you know your retail stores your you know your local businesses uh lo local um gaming stores as well to see what they're gonna have in their inventory so let's just get right into it and the first planeswalker we're gonna talk about is basri now basri um is uh three mana and let's just get right into it so his first loyalty ability is put a plus one plus one counter on top of to one target creature. It gains indestructible until end of turn. So this plus one uh, ability, it's, in my opinion, crazy because we're talking about not only are you erasing your your loyalty count, which means that, you know, your planeswalker has a chance to stay on the battlefield, but, you know, it gives you it gives you the chance to attack with any creature um, and it's indestructible, so nothing that has combat damage is going to destroy it. So you, I mean, there's multiple uh, combinations you can do this. Maybe you have a creature that when you attack, it has an effect, and you don't. But it's a low um, power and toughness creature. You could go ahead and do this. Um, I don't know. Maybe you have a life link uh, creature that you want to get some life, and then you do this. Plus, you know, there's many combinations. So the minus two ability. Whenever one or more token creatures attack this turn, create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. So, it just pretty much doubles your attack front. And it's pretty cool because if you have, I don't know, X amount of, of creatures, you get that many X amount of 1-1 of, uh, one, one creatures and they can only block one. I mean, they might not block... They might block the one one soldiers just to get rid of them or they can just block you and just let those one one tokens attack but if they do and let's say you have you have four loyalty abilities you do that once you do it again and then you're just is it gets crazy now it's ultimate is you get an emblem with at the beginning of comeback you can you turn a creature you turn i mean i'm sorry at the beginning of comeback on your turn create a one one soldier creature token then put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control so that's that's pretty crazy because is you get an m i'm sorry you get an emblem so this is going to happen at the beginning of comeback every single time you get a 
you get a soldier, and you, your creatures get your creatures continue to get big. So if you save this for two turns, three turns, I'm sorry, you hit that ultimate, your creatures are gonna get pretty big. And the cool thing about it is, it's a three drop, so it's an early game type of type of card. You put that out, you're good to go. Moving on, uh, we got another Basri, Devoted Paladin. Um, and this one, uh, the first ability is put a plus one, plus one contra on, on up to one target creature. It gains vigilance and a turn. So, wow, this is crazy. If you pair this up with a Paradise Druid, this is pretty good, actually. Uh, whenever a creature attacks this turn, this is the minus uh, one ability, put a one, one counter on it. All right, so so far the plus one, uh, it seems to be pretty awesome. The minus one, it's it is it, 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 it depends. And then the ultimate is create uh, creatures you control get plus two plus two and gain flying onto on a turn. So pretty much again, you do this with a paradise druid. You mutate that paradise druid. Whenever you get to attack with it twice, if you do the plus one uh, uh, ability. It gets big, it gets vigilance, nobody can destroy it, and then you come in with all your creatures with flying. So, out of the two, I will say that this one has more upside, and it costs less. Just because it's mana cost, I will use uh, Bass Recat rather than the Voter Paladin. But this this one is more of an endgame type of deal. But out of the two, I gotta say that Bass Re will be my choice of Planeswalker if I'm gonna use one of those two. So, moving on, we are going to Teferi. Now, this card, apparently, we're going to read it. Apparently, for a four drop, you get this card. And people are already saying that this card is broken. So, let's see what it looks like. So, first of all, the card itself has an ability. You may activate loyal abilities of Teferi Master of Time on any player's turn. Anytime you could cast an instant. What? Yep, this is broken. So you may activate loyal abilities of this planeswalker on any player's turn and time you could cast an instant. That is insane. Wow. So pretty much that's crazy. Anytime you can cast an instant, so the main the main phase and end phase. Actually, no, anytime you can cast an instant, you can put a plus one. On this but the plus one is draw a card then discard a card but if you draw a card and if that's the card that you don't want you can discard that card and continue on until you wow so this is a crazy card uh, the minus three is target creature you don't control faces out so this is a mechanic uh, for I thought it was new but I've heard that it was it used to be um, it used to be used back then but for me this is new the face out you guys let me know in the comment section below, but uh, treat it. Okay, let me see. It says, treat it and anything attached to it as though they don't exist until it's controller's next turn. So if you phase out a, a, a target creature, pretty much you are temporarily disabling that card for that end of turn. So if you're if that person has a blocker, that's one blocker you phase them out if they are if they this is crazy because if they have a big creature and they're gonna attack you with it you just phase it out and it's like it's not there until the next turn that's crazy and then minus 10 says take two extra turns after this one you get three straight turns that is insane. You know what that means. Insane. You attack. They block. You attack. They block. And by then, they probably don't have any blockers. And you completely attack. This is a ult. This is a crazy card. Oh, my goodness. This is broke. If I get this card, I'm definitely putting this somewhere. I'm doing a deck for this card specifically. Wow. Anyways. You know, after seeing this to Ferris, it's like, hey, let me go to this. All right. So Teferi, <clears throat> uh, Timeless Voyeur, uh, again, it's more expensive. The plus one ability is draw a card, then target creature, put target creature on top of his owner's library. It's a little more of, of, of the blue mana uh, mentality, of course. 
And then the uh, ultimate is each creature target. Each creature target opponent controls phases out until the end of your next turn. They can't face in. Okay. <clears throat> so this is actually not bad. The ultimate is pretty good if you get there. You need four turns to get there, but every creature that opponent has phases out until until the end of your next turn. So that's crazy because you're going to attack. They can't do anything. And then you will attack again. That is actually this is this is broken for everything that it does. But if you can get the if you can get to fairy and you can get that ultimate minus eight, you're you're golden. At least for um an end game type of thing. Alright, moving on. So Liliana Waker of the Dead. Now, plus one. Each player discards a card. Each opponent who can't loses three lives. <clears throat> so this corner card is from your hand. So anything any any card that you have in your hand That's when the discard uh, Ability goes in and anything in the battlefield that is yours. That's when the sacrifice uh, ability comes in So if you don't have any cards, you are going to lose three life and If you only have one card, then you're gonna lose it And that goes then that goes for me as well So I wouldn't put this ability if I didn't have any cards now Target creature minus three ability. Target creature gets m minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. So, depending on how many cards in my graveyard, I use my minus three ability. I can destroy creatures. So this is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. And it's a four drop again. Um, and the ultimate, uh, you get an emblem with at the beginning of comeback on your turn. Put target creature card from a graveyard. Onto the battlefield under your control. It gains hate. What? But, wow. Okay, so look look how it's written. At the beginning of comeback on your turn. So in my turn, when I'm about to, in my comeback phase, put target creature. So it's target creature. It doesn't say. So it's any creature card from a graveyard. It doesn't say your graveyard. So you can go into the opponent's graveyard and get a wow and it doesn't say it doesn't say oh wow under your control it gains haste so it comes in ready to fight and the crazy part about it is it doesn't say until on a turn so you are getting control of that card well this is the first time any black card i think in my opinion allows you to take control of a card at least from someone's graveyard, that is. That is insane. Wow. Alright, so, moving on. Liliana. Death, Mosh, or Mage, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, plus one is Return. I believe the second ones that they're showing, the high mana um, Planeswalkers, those are the ones that are coming with the Planeswalker decks. If I'm not mistaken. I, I could be mistaken, but let's see. Uh, plus one, return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Destroy target creature. Its controller loses two lives. That's a minus three. <clears throat> so the plus one is pretty good. You can return targets. Uh, the second one is destroy target creature. Controller loses two lives. So that's pretty good. If you if you bring it in just to destroy a creature, you're good. Um, the ultimate is target opponent loses two lives for each creature card in the all. Oh, Wow. So you put... <laughs> that is crazy. So you put this card... Let's say with a Demir deck. Where where the purpose of that deck is to put the opponent's cards in the graveyard. And you hold on. And you hold on. You put this in. And for some reason it, su it survives... Three turns. On your fourth turn with this. You ultimate... And the target opponent loses two lives for each creature card in their graveyard. Are we serious? That's 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 crazy. That is that is insane. Ah, uh, wow. That is definitely insane. So, wow. Anyways, moving on to our favorite. I'm um, not not really. Every time my my friends or my opponent uses Chandra, I'm like, oh damn, here we go. But Chandra, it's a very aggro. 
of course, is red. So, Chandra, Heart of Fire. The name already scares me. So, the plus one ability, discard your hand, then exile the top three cards of your library until end of turn. Oh, until end of turn, you may play cards exile this way. So, you discard your hand. So, bye-bye to your hand. And then exile the top three cards of your library. Until end, until end of turn, you may play cards exile this way. So, you may play them, meaning that I don't think... Now, I wonder if you can, pay, you can play them without the mana cost. But I'm going to say that you have to pay mana. So, I don't know about this plus one ability. Let's see the other plus one ability. Chandra, Heart of Fire deals two damage to any target. That's probably the one people are mostly going to use. Unless I don't have any. Unless the first one works if I don't have any cards in my hand. So I don't, I can't, I mean, it doesn't matter if I discard my hand. But I'll be able to draw three cards and play them if I exile them. All right. Minus nine, the ultimate. Search your graveyard and library from for any, num any number of red instance and or sorcery cards. Exile them. Then shuffle your, your library. You may cast them this turn at six mana. So, obviously, you get all the instants and sorceries that deal damage. You already got six. So, man, I'm, wow. So, I'm thinking of that card. Can't believe I, I forgot the name. That card that. That deals two damage to any target. Everybody uses it. Is one is a one mana. Four of those. And then you and then you get two that have the spectacle. If it's in your graveyard, those that have the the spectacle like uh, ability to it that deals three damage. You're dealing three three. That's six. Four times two. That's eight. <laughs> 14 damage if you do this ultimate if you, i mean there's other instances that are incredible but you are going to have already three four five you're already going to have five so eventually this right here you're gonna have 11 mana to work with you get those instances that that target that target any any target and you are going to destroy your player this is a very ultimate and for five drop that's not bad that this is good this is a good card. Moving on. Chandra, Flames Catalyst. So, the plus one ability. He says, Chandra, Flames Catalyst, deals three damage to each opponent. So, that's already, every turn is a plus one, you're dealing three damage. So, that's already annoying. People are going to see this card, and they will want this card to leave. All right. And the minus two. You may cast target... You may cast target red instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. If that spell will be put into your graveyard, this turn exile. So minus two, you look you look for instant or sorcery that you had and you play it again. That can come in handy. I wouldn't do it right away. I will try to get it to the ultimate. And the ultimate says discard your hand, then draw seven cards until end of turn. Until end of turn, you may cast spells from your hand with oh get the hell out of here now this car is op because to get to the ultimate you need to survive three turns now if it does survive three turns you already dealt nine damage to that player now on top of that when you hit the ultimate you get seven cards and you can play right and you cast spells from your hand without paying the mana cost. So what in the world? You can you can bring out blockers. You can bring out big creatures. Maybe you don't have the mana and this is a four or six. This, this is a six drop. So you can get those big, big creatures in the deck. This, wow, this card is, get the hell out of here with this card. Unbelievable. Anyways, moving on to Mr. Garuk. I love Garuk, man. That 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 um that Golgari Garuk card is amazing. I love it. So this is more Garuk. Let's see what happens. So the plus one ability. Up to one target creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample until in a turn. 
that is she eats. Then it says the minus two. If you don't have a creature, you can put this and you create a creature. It says create a three three green beast creature token. Then if an opponent controls more than more creatures than you, put a loyalty counter on Garuk. So pretty much it costs you two. But if your opponent has more creatures than you, it's essentially costing you one. So that is crazy. Now, the ultimate. You get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step, you may search your library for a creature card. Put it into the battlefield. What? At the be what? At the beginning of your end step. This is retarded, man. <laughs> for a four drop, it has to survive three turns. You get an emblem. Remember, guys, this emblem's... um. Right? This emblem stay for the rest of the game. You know what I'm saying? So if you manage to get to the ultimate, it's not like when your your planeswalker dies, the emblem the emblem goes with it. No. It stays. So pretty much you're mid game at this point. You search for those crazy cards and you put this in. Unbelievable. This is wow. <laughs> this is a good card. But let's see. Moving on. So Garuk, Savage, Herald. Let's see. So it's five. So it's pretty high compared to all of them. This is uh, in the second Shan and the Chandras. We start with five. This is um, a five loyalty count. So this is pretty good. Plus one. It says reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it in your hand. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of your library. Okay. Minus two. Tire creature you control deals damage equal to its power to another tire creature. So that's good. That's some removal. And the ultimate until end of turn, creatures you control gain. You may have this creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. That is crazy. So if someone if someone blocks it, it's still gonna deal that that damage to you. So if you have big creatures, that's it. So that's crazy. I would say Garuk Unleashed won this this battle. So. That's crazy. So let's go to the last planeswalker. And it's Eugen, the spirit dragon. Um, so pretty much the plus two ability. So it starts with seven. The plus two ability. Eugen, the spirit dragon, deals three damage to any target. So this is pretty much you can have it to you know from target removal or just to hit damage to your Hit damage to your player or hit damage to any planeswalker, which it seems that we need to start running stuff that gets rid of planeswalkers because it's getting crazy out here. Then the minus X ability, exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. Oh, wow. So right away, this is no wonder it's an eight drop. I want this on, I want this on my commander. Oh my goodness. So you're gonna exile each permanent. No, it's not each creature, each permanent with converted mana cost S or less. So this starts with seven. And you put this in a Simic deck, you can put this in turn five. Minus X, you look how you look at their highest permanent mana cost. That's gonna be the the X. And then he has to exile each. Wow. But it doesn't say opponent, so it also involves with you. But exile each permanent with converted mana, X or less. That that's crazy. That is crazy. But I mean, it it it, it could be a board wipe. It's, it's it's essentially a board wipe, and it's pretty good because if your opponent has more than you, you throw this bad boy. Forget the plus two. I'm doing the minus X. In minus seven, it says, you gain seven life, draw seven cards. Then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand until, bruh. This only has to survive two turns with the plus two ability, and you don't lose it when you do the ultimate. You gain seven life. You draw seven cards. So let's say you already have seven cards. You draw seven more. You have you have fourteen cards. Then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand into the battlefield. So no mana cost. Put as many permanents you want, enchantments, lands, everything into your hand. I'll put I put all the lands, I'll put the permanents, and then I'll whatever I have with my 
whatever I have with the lands, I pay the, the, the mana cost, and boom, I drop more creatures. So this is insane of a card. I like it. I know, I know people are going to see this card and they're going to go right at it. But we do the plus two. Then the, we do minus seven. Then the plus two. Then the minus the minus X. I mean, plus two, minus X. Until we're comfortable enough that we can survive like a couple of turns. Then we go with a minus ten. And that is, that is an insane card. I like it. I actually like it. This card is amazing. I like it. So, anyways, guys. Um, once again... That's all I have for you guys. If you stick this long in the video, I appreciate the support. Um, if you're like me, I'm super excited for Corset 2021. I'm excited for for those reprints. So some cards become like Fable Passage. They become uh, less less cost, um, and you know we I can finally uh, acquire them. I'm really excited for pretty much all the new all the new cards, all the new Planeswalkers. Every you know all the combinations. I don't know if you guys are like me when I see a card like combinations come into and synergy ideas come into my mind, and I want to create uh, decks left and right. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, leave a like, uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you guys thought about uh, Planeswalkers. Tell me which Planeswalker is your favorite, um, and tell me which one are you gonna go, you know, so sought after. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So once again. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitch, uh, follow us on Twitter, and this is your boy Victor88, and he's out. Deuces! Thank you so much for tuning in and watching our video. Please share it, leave a like, and if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. But more important, guys, head over to twitch.tv slash thankyougaming99 and go follow us on our Twitch. Make sure you put that notification on so you make sure when we are live and when we're streaming so you guys can join us and have fun with us. Hope you guys enjoyed everything. Thank you so much. Deuces. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the most recent and hot topic news in sports, go over to Instagram and follow Keep It Sports Pod as Lou and Juan engage in the most amazing sports talks you can possibly fathom. So go ahead and follow, show the support. Deuces.